of the posors are there. It's a pleasure to go into restaurants in Beverly Hills with all the fakers or not. They will make believe they have deals pending. They got a deal pending. It's almost coming. It's almost about to be completed. It's in progress. They're looking at it. They're evaluating it. There's no one there. It was gorgeous. I'm never going there again. The Hotel Bel Air, Los Angeles, opened again in Schwan, never going there. In France, Le Maurice, Paris, La Plaza Athene, in Switzerland, if you're thinking of going there for the holidays, of all of my rich listeners, uh, Le Richemont, or for those of you who are popping off to Italy for the holidays because you have nothing but money in your pockets, uh, he owns the Hotel Principe de Savoia in Milan and the Hotel Eden in Rome, you know. If Christians really want to support Christmas, they ought to consider who the Sultan of Brunei really is. Every cup of coffee you buy in any of his restaurants go towards his belief system. That's all. Next case. 855. Raj on WMAL. Welcome to the program, Raj. What's your topic? About Tourette's, but it relates to a whole other things which you have spoken about so eloquently. Well, make, make it quick, though, Raj. Tell us about Tourette's, what you know about it. That is, the regeneration of our neurons is indeed possible. How do you know that neurons can be regenerated? Uh, it's been proven. Where is, where the number so, of, what is, you're saying is these poor children, if they had this regeneration, would not suffer? They would not suffer because built into our DNA is self-repair. Those self-repair things have been blunted by all these antibiotics and all the pharmaceuticals. Hold on, Raj. I know you've called before. You're a brilliant man. I'd like to hear more uh, about this. Join the Savage Nation. Call now. 855-400-SAVAGE. 855-400-7282. Savage. Talking about uh, the cultural revolution that is being conducted upon America by Barack Fang Obama. The Fang is on vacation right now, and the Fang is resting for a while before he comes back to bite the apple again. And the Fang won't be happy until this country of ours resembles that of communist China and a Mao Zedong. In a minor form, of course. And whether you can survive the cultural revolution is a question of whether you can and what do I mean by the cultural revolution? It's everything I talk about every day. Flooding America with cultures that are not only incapable of assimilating into this culture, but the opposite of that. They want to destroy this culture. They want to convert the culture. Do I have to spell out the name Islam? Islam is not compatible with the West. Islam has been at war with everyone for 1,400 years, no matter what Hillary Clinton may protesteth about it. The religion itself is a religion of conversion. The cultural revolution that China went through is what Obama is trying to conduct upon this country in a far more stealthy manner. The cultural revolution occurs uh, on all levels. The universities have become... I, do I have a word for the single word of what they've done to the universities? Take a look at what these Black Lives Matter radicals have done to the campuses. Shouting down professors... White professors at that who won't cater to them. Do you see what I'm talking about? Those are the red guards of today. The movies, pollution, garbage, filth, undermining the family, undermining era, faith, everything you can believe in. That's the cultural revolution. They make a good buck at it, too. Oh, yeah. Big dollar in, in, in the, in the counterculture. Big dollar in the anti-hero business. All the great anti-heroes. So... The Cultural Revolution. Can you survive it? You know, I have two books I'm reading. One is Jung Chang's book, The Unknown Story of Mao. It's an older book. Light reading. It's 570, uh, 775 pages. I'm taking them for the holidays. The other is by another woman, Nian Chang, Life and Death in Shanghai. Another shorty, a 500-pager. And in this book, she conveys the horrors faced by one brave Chinese woman during the Cultural Revolution. That's the communist revolution. The communist revolution. She describes what they did to the people. From a China ravaged by persecution comes this remarkable and gripping testimony. You don't understand what Obama's doing. 
We have a society that is persecuting the Christian white male of the heterosexual variety on an almost daily basis, whether it be in the military or any other aspect of America. I don't have to spell it out for you. If you doubt me, then read Government Zero and check out the references. Ask any military man what's going on inside the military. That's part of the Cultural Revolution. You see it's going on at such a slow pace, you don't even see it happening. And if you study the history of the, of the communist Chinese Cultural Revolution, including the rise and fall of the Red Guards, you will see that Barack Obama is a mini Mao. He's getting away with everything he possibly can and then some, given the constraints that the geniuses called the Founding Fathers placed upon this monster! 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 Resting up his fangs, sharpening the fangs in Hawaii for the next bite of the apple. And so, then, so we're talking about the, the, the big corporations who've never had it so good. See, this is how it works. You don't understand this. What you people don't understand is that if you study, if you study the history of tyrannies, which I've done all of my life since I'm 18 years old, I've been fascinated by tyrannies. How do you think Hitler rose to power out of being an obscure bum in the streets with a bunch of perverted thugs who beat everyone up? How do you think he rose to take over Germany? You would say the industrialists would have stopped him. Yeah, they would have stopped him if he wasn't good for them. But he was very smart. He cultivated, for example, the Krupps who ran the Krupp steel f uh, f uh, company, builders of the armaments in Germany and, of, and the ovens who baked the Jews. And the Krupps backed him to the hilt. So did all of the major corporations in Germany. He was very smart to have cultivated the major corporations of Germany so they wouldn't oppose him. So he made favorite, favorite deals with them way along every step of the way. So now we have an interview with Apple CEO Tim Cook. And I'm making a big leap here. I'm making a cultural leap for those of you who want it and can follow the bouncing ball. What am I saying to you? Why is it we don't hear a peep from Tim Cook of Apple or the great sweater wearer of Microsoft who has the best PR team in the world makes you all think he's such a kindly, nice man? Why don't they say a word? They have good deals. They don't pay 39% tax like any corporation would, you know, less expenses. They're not paying 39%. They do uh, all sorts of deals. I think one is called the Triple Irish, which Microsoft is famous for. Billions, hundreds of billions of dollars kept offshore so they don't have to pay American taxes, even though, they're, even though they are a U.S.-based company. Even though their companies were built here based on American technology created by government money. Think about what I just said to you. What do you think, uh, this, this thing with the undershirt? Zuckerberg is such a genius? I'm sure he has genius in him. But Zuckerberg didn't invent the Internet any more than Al Gore did. Zuckerberg was a buccaneer who knew how to use the Internet. He came up with an app. Basically, it's an app. A Schmendrick with an app at Harvard. That's what he is. A Schmendrick with an app. The Schmendrick from Harvard has an app. The Schmendrick didn't create the Internet. The Schmendrick created an app, so he made a lot of money. But the Schmendrick cultivates Mao Tse Obama. So Schmendrick gets favors from... Obama. This is how it works. And that's how it worked in Germany. That's how it works in America. They could care less what he does to the country. They could care less whether he Islamicizes this nation or floods it with children from south, from south of the border who are flooding in over the border by the busload, running over our borders right now, diseased or not diseased. It doesn't matter to Obama. All that matters is the cultural revolution. He has one end goal in mind to make certain that the heterosexual Christian white male is diminished in this country, which is why he gave that stupid speech that I played for you yesterday about the so-called blue-collar worker who is disenfranchised and, and how the blue-collar worker he understands is disenfranchised because he no longer takes a lunch pail and goes to a factory and brings home the bacon. That's the extent of uh, his, his, his analysis. Now, blue-collar worker is a code word for white Christian male. Let me just make it very clear. BCW equals WCM. Made it up for you on the spot, okay? 
When they say blue collar, they mean white male. That's all they mean. Of course they understand what he's done to them. So it's going on and on and on. And I wrote a monologue the other day. And we're going to get to Tourette's again in a minute. So don't don't hang up if you're calling on that, because I want to learn about that. And my, companies hiding in, income overseas. <laughs> I want to talk about that. Here's a shorty. Michael Savage newsletter. People finally waking up to two-party fraud. <clears throat> in the aftermath of the $1.1 trillion omnibus spending bill funding Obama's fundamental transformation, formation of America, which means his cultural revolution. Savage told his listeners that many Republicans are finally realizing there is no serious opposition to the Democrats. He is unstoppable, Savage said of Obama. Virtually everything as crazy man has wanted he has gotten. And you only know half of what he has done. You know that there's no Republican Party. I've told you it's a one-party system since 1994 when I started in radio. I called it a one-party system playing two-card Monty. I told you it was Democrats and Republicrats. I told you it was three shells on the table with no P under any of the shells. I told you that. It's been a shell game all along. I'm shocked that people are waking up who backed George Bush, who went to dinner with George Bush, who licked George Bush's shoes, who promoted the Republican Party for 20 years. Now suddenly they're saying, end the Republican Party? Really? Really? Welcome to the club. Bravo, Michael. Very well done, indeed. Eight five five four seven two eight two. Let's go to the callers. Lauren on WABC. Thank you so much for calling. What's on your mind, Lauren? French neurologist in 1885, probably named Tourette. Um, it starts in childhood with repetitive grimaces, uh, and tics, usually head and neck, but then it can go to the arms and the trunk. And then later you can get involuntary barks, grunts, or other noises. And what you were talking about, um, foul language, that's coprolalia. Uh, about 50% of patients start with the coprolalia when they get older, and that usually refers to anything that has to do with feces for some reason. It's autosomal, mm -hmm. uh, but it's underdiagnosed because a lot of kids have ticks. It's lifelong. Um, they only can treat it with vitamin H, which is uh, uh, Haldol. Uh, clonidine. But, but, um, but that's a joke when uh, you say vitamin H, right? Haldorol is not a vitamin, correct? Well, I know, but we used to say that. Go get them. Uh, that's very funny what you just said. I just caught it. It's very funny. I, I really like you as a caller. You're so knowledgeable. You're a neurology nurse? Oh, yeah, we, we've spoken before. Um, La Lauren, Lauren, but you're a neurology nurse? Yeah, neurology, neurosurgery. Oh, I, I'm losing my vision, so I'm not working now, but I, yes. So these poor kids, they suffer terribly, don't they? Yeah, they do, and and it, you know, you know how it hurts because when you have an involuntary movement over and over and over again, that muscle gets really sore. Um, and the clonopin. What, what is it? Is it a, is it a neuro? It's a neurological disease, isn't it? Yes, it is. It's good. It, it's it's considered an autosomal dominant multiple tick disorder with variable penetrance, <laughs> which which is basically a disorder of extra pyramidal and cerebellar. So, yeah, it, it's, it is a neurological disorder. There's no doubt about it. But males, three to one, uh, have it. But, but let me, whoa, whoa, whoa. Let me say anything. So there's no psychological components to this? It's all neurological? As far as, yes, it's considered, it's considered, um, it's considered, um, um, it's considered a neurological disorder, and the reason that they have trouble early on is they're trying to um, sort out the psychiatric from the neurological because lots of people have tics. But when I watched the show last night, it was heartbreaking because you see the boys about to go into what looks like a almost like a um, an epileptic seizure, trying to control the tic, trying to control the blurting out, and they can't do it. And you could see how frightened they get and how angry they get because they can't control it control it for just like a, you know, I don't want to say, I don't want to give it a time, but they know and they try and they can, can control the, uh, they call it coprolalia, C-O-P-R-O, lalia, because, uh, you know, they know, but they, but they can't, you know, so they, they want, they want to stop it, but, but they can't stop it. Terrible. So how much of this behavior is OCD? Uh, I don't think, I don't think OCD has anything to do with it. I mean, you could have OCD and Tourette's, but Tourette's is not considered a, a psychiatric disorder. It's a strictly a, an extra pyramidal. 
as opposed to central nervous. Right, so what do they put? They put these kids on Haldor.